A tree in the courtyard, looking through Anne Frank's window. The two of us looked out at the blue sky, the bare chestnut tree glistening with dew, the seagulls and other birds glinting with silver as they swooped through the air, and we were so moved and entranced that we couldn't speak. Anne Frank The tree in the courtyard lived for 172 years. She was a horse chestnut. Her leaves were green stars, her flowers foaming cones of white and pink. Each fall, she let spiky seed pods clatter to earth. In winter, her bare boughs etched a lattice against the pale blue sky. She grew near a city canal. Seagulls flocked to her shade. For the first time of her life, her world was the courtyard. She was not yet tall enough to see beyond the homes, workshops, and factories. Then one spring, she stretched above the orange roofs and took in the beautiful city. She spread roots and reached skyward in peace until war came. Explosions shook the ground. Rockets split the night. Strangers invaded the city. The first winter of the war, a new owner came to one of the factories. He had a wife and two daughters. The older girl was quiet and proper. The young girl, the younger was lively with dark hair. When they visited the factory, she would play by the canal or write by the kitchen window. She wrote for hours. Even when her father called her, she wrote. The tree loved the sight of her. In the heat of midsummer, the girl stopped coming. The tree dropped worried. Uh, the tree dropped worried leaves until she spotted the girl in the factory annex. Her family was there too. A father, mother, and a boy soon joined them. Later, another man and a black cat. The girl and her father stitched rag. Curtains for the main windows. From time to time, a face might peer out between the cracks. The only clear view was into the attic. There, the girl would read, stroke the cat, and brush her unruly hair. Sometimes, she stared at the sky. Mostly, she wrote. She filled a red and white diary. When warplanes roared and bombs rocked the annex, the girl fled into her father's arms. She did not come outside. The tree did not understand. The war dragged on. Once through the curtains, the tree watched the people light candles and sing. The girl grew pale and thin. A young woman helper who worked in the factory brought her pens and paper. The girl, the girl wrote and wrote some more. She filled page after page. The fourth winter of the war, the tree saw the boy with the girl. They would talk and laugh or simply gaze out the attic window 
at our bare branches glistening with dew, so moved and entranced that they couldn't speak, they kissed. The tree made her blossoms extra bright that spring. Late one summer morning, men in gray uniforms came to the factory. They ripped the curtains from the annex windows, dumped the girls' papers to the floor, and herded the people into waiting black cars. The cars sped off. The women from the factory gathered the girls' writing. The tree kept a vigil. Summer, autumn, winter, spring, the seasons changed. The war ended. Only the father returned. He was thin with sad eyes as he padded through the annex like a living ghost. The women helper gave him the girls' writing. They cried. The tree lived on, but she was never the same. Time passed. To her surprise, other children came to the annex. They walked where the girl had walked and sat where she had sat. Some found a wind-blown seed pod on the pavement or gazed at the tree so moved and entranced that they couldn't speak. Year after year, they came. By the end of the century, the tree had lived a full life. She was ready to die. Many strangers came to try to save her. They injected her with medicine. They trimmed her crown and cut sprouts from her trunk. They built her a still support and collected her seed pods like gold coins. The tree recalled how few had tried to save the girl. The summer, the girl would have returned. The g- girl would have turned eighty-one. A storm snapped the tree's trunk in two. Just like the girl, she passed into history. Just like the girl, she lives on. Her seeds and saplings have been planted with love. One grown in New York City. Where twin towers once stood, another grows at an Arkansas high school. Still, more grow in England, Argentina, France, all around the world. Though the new trees are still young, children come to visit. They read the girls' words about a chestnut in a courtyard glistening with dew. And touch the thin trunks. They are so entranced that they cannot speak.